Christmas lights already? No, it's never too early for Christmas lights. So this is one of a number of gifts that were sent from Poland by Michał. And uh, these are uh, a Jumi brand Christmas lights. There's 100 in the set and they'd run directly off, I was going to say, well, 240, I suppose. Ultimately, they might be, let's see what it says on the label. It will be compliant with the European... It says, it's got the wide range here, 220 to 240 volts, so covering the whole European voltage range. And the power consumption is about uh, 40, uh, should I say, 4 watts. And these are very simple. Now, let's get let's uh, take a look at this candy before I go into these. Some of the things that Michal sent were a selection of candy. This thing here, I, I can't even pronounce that. I, I can kind of pronounce the easier bits here. Tiki tacky. Uh, this is a sort of... a. Uh, Weird texture, it's kind of coconut, but it's got, it's a truffle, but it's like multiple... Oh, hold on, I'll, I shall snap it in half and show you the inside, and you can see what it looks like. It's a kind of two-layer truffle with a sort of darker one on the top and light colour on the bottom, and it's got fine coconut in it. It gives it a very strange, creaky texture, it's quite nice. Uh, there's the... I wouldn't break this one in half because it would be very messy. It's a sort of slightly citrus fondant. In chocolate, we've got a rum truffle. The rum truffle seems to be very common amount around all European countries, and I guess the world, in fact. And then these really intriguing things. They look like a hard toffee, but they're not hard. It's a strange hybrid. It's almost like a cross between fudge, caramel, and tablet. It's a really strange multi-layer texture. I wonder how they make these. It's complex. They look hard, but they're really soft. They're quite nice to eat. Too easy to eat, in fact, so I shall put these out the way before I'm tempted to stick them in my mouth and start making slobbering noises during the during the filming of the fairy lights. So let's uh, take a closer look at these. So the main supplies come in. Modest length of lead. It then goes to a uh, bridge rectifier in here, which is a common enough arrangement. And then it's just one continuous series circuit of all the LEDs. And if you consider that the rectified mains uh, will be in the region of about 350-ish uh, volts uh, on our sort of supply, uh, that's the peak voltage of the sine wave. The voltage uh, you tend to get, say for instance, our local voltage is theoretically 230, 240. That's the RMS voltage, root mean square, it's the average voltage. The peak voltage is higher. And this simple circuit is going to have resistors built into it. I think we should uh, I think we should look for those resistors. I'm a bit suspicious there might be one under here. But are there... I uh, tell you what, you know the best way to find this out? It's made to power this up and then use a thermal imaging camera. And I should be able to use the thermal imaging camera to find where all the resistors are. I'm going to unfangle this, get the thermal imaging camera booted up, and then we'll take a look at it. So that's them unrolled, and I've left them on for a while, and I've found that there's not that many resistors. If you go from this end of the lead, the first one doesn't have a resistor. The next one does have a resistor. You can see the distinct uh, temperature difference there. Uh, in fact, the first three have resistors, and then after that, they're just, you know, they're just all just LEDs and that's it. So the only resistors are in positions two, three, and four in this lead. And the temperature is approximately about... 36 degrees Celsius, which isn't that, it's not that high. So these aren't dropping an awful lot of voltage. And if you consider that the LEDs themselves, they uh, add up, if you get uh, 50 blue and green, which are going to have a rough voltage about 3 volts. So that's 150 volts plus 50 red and yellow, which will have a rough forward voltage of 2 volts. Then that adds up to about uh, 100 volts, 250 volts, the LEDs. Um, and the peak vo uh, voltage of the sine wave is going to be about uh, the 350 mark. So they're lit for a modest section of time at the top, uh, but there isn't much left to dissipate across the resistors. So it's just a, a very sort of low value. But we'll find out because I'm about to open that. We'll take a look inside. So I'll unplug these, and the resistors are in these three here. So is it going to be a quarter watt resistor? Let's uh, carefully slip the insulation away, the heat shrink, and see what we can find inside. I can sleeve these up again afterwards. Not that I have a shortage of fair lights here. So we've got the green outer sleeve, and we've got a clear inner sleeve with the wee tiny 8th watt resistor. That is minute. Oh dear, that is absolutely tiny. The colour code is 
It looks like green, brown, brown. 510 ohm. Let's uh, go a bit closer. Let's actually test that. Let's uh, slip right into the insulation and actually stick a meter across it. But it looks like uh, it's just going to be 150 ohms. So they really don't have much left to drop across the 100 LEDs from the, our main supply here. It's very delicately balanced. Is this is where I cut myself, isn't it? I say this, I've not done it yet, but you just never know. Let's peel that back. That's a bit clear as well. Yes, uh, let's get the meter in and we'll measure that. So turn the meter to, I think the 200 ohm range will be ample for that. Meter lead across there, meter lead across the other end of the resistor. Let's uh, try press it down where I can get a good connection. Oh, there's a big splat of soda right at the back of that resistor as well. Uh, I might have got that wrong then. Have I got that wrong? Let's try a higher resistance range. Oh, it's 500 ohm. Hold on. Uh, or 510 ohm. So it is green. Uh, of course, yeah, it was. Uh, that's what I said, wasn't it? Uh, five. It was a uh, green, brown, brown, 510 ohm. So that's exactly what it is. Uh, why did I set that down to 200 ohm? That was me having a little brain fart. Yeah, 510 ohm. So they've got three of those in series. Um, and the typical current through this set is about uh, 20 milliamps. So uh, we can calculate that, what uh, voltage is being dropped effectively across that resistor. It's quite hard to measure because it's a sine wave. And it's not even a full sine wave, it's just part of a sine wave. But we could uh, say the current I measured was, uh, I think it was actually about 18 milliamps. So let's uh, do uh, the I equals V over R, V equals I times R. So that's 18 milliamps times 510 ohms gives the voltage across it, which is 9 volts, uh, which times 0 0.018 and the dissipation of the resistor is... 0.165. It's a bit naughty-ish, but it's okay, because it's, it's not in three years. It's got the heat shrink next to it, I'm guessing. That's going to make a difference. I think I'd rather have had quarter watt resistors. This is about to snap off. It's just I can feel that lead. You know when the lead is there, you flexed it a bit too much and it just starts going ping, that sort of softness. Uh, and it's got a big skid of soda up the side. A bit naughty. But that's okay. So I'm going to fix this now. I'm going to put another 510 ohm resistor in uh, and then heat shrink that up and uh, that'll be back into normal operation again now, now that we've uh, analysed what's inside. The newest value of resistor I had was 560 ohms. That's okay, that'll do. So I shall tin the 560 ohm resistor. This is kind of an upgrade in a way because it's a beefier resistor. It will dissipate very slightly more because it's a higher resistance. It will limit the current a wee bit. There'll be a slightly higher voltage across it. So I'm going to tin the lead of the LED. Then I'm going to put this resistor up to it like this. And solder the leads together. Like that. Then I'm going to crop that lead. This is where there's a slight disadvantage of the shorter... Uh, the shorter... Uh, Spacer here versus that resistor. Oh, it doesn't matter. What's the worst could happen? You could short the resistor out and pass lots more current through the set But there's a couple other resistors in line to to reduce the effect of that. Oh, this is a this is very dry solder This is going to be lead free solder. I think I might actually just crop that off And just start afresh So let's get the wire strippers in and strip a fresh Bit of wire. That's very chewy Oh, that's very chewy indeed. There we go. Twist, throw some soda on. Crop it back a little bit. Now I've flowed the soda on, the plastic has shrunk back a little bit. So let's uh, crop that a little bit. Keep it as small as possible. Tin the resistor lead. 
get the component lead back on. I could test it by powering it now. Oh, big splat of soda there. That's what I don't want. And then poking through the heat shrink. And if I uh, power that up now, that should be it back in normal operation. Yes, it is. Righty-ho. Excellent. Let's put that spacer in. Ram it up there. And then slip some heat shrink over it. Now, the heat shrink I've got here, I've got a couple of different sizes. This one's going to fit. Yes, this one is going to fit. Right, let's uh, put that on. Where is my pair of scissors? There it is. Let's be generous here. Let's uh, slide plenty of heat shrink down to access a strain relief. I don't think the other stuff is glue in it. I don't think that it has much strain relief other than uh, it relies on the sort of soldered connections. So let's put that like that, and then we should put another layer over the top. So we'll get the heat gun in. And for those of you wondering, the heat gun is part of a 8786D solder station by Yahua. Lots of variety though, there's not, there's not yeah, just one particular type. A lot of uh, different brands use uh, have similar solder stations with different numbers. And some of them use the same number because they are often rip-offs of other products. So that's one layer of heat shrink. Let's use a thicker piece of heat shrink and put uh, that round. So let's uh, nudge that back up, crop that there, put that down, grab the heat gun again and put the second layer of heat shrink around it. Do a proper job. Not like the cheapy Chinese lights that just have a single layer of heat shrink with solder connections poking through the side. And absolutely no strain relief, although technically speaking, this one doesn't have much in the way of strain relief either. There we go. I kind of prefer it when you can see the resistor inside, but that's just uh, me liking the electronic stuff. And that should be it. Safe and sound, ready to handle again. So yeah, interesting set of lights. Super simple, uh, very common format for mains powered LED strings. Uh, particularly the municipal ones that you plug end to end, they often just have the one big rectifier at the beginning and then they'll have the three wires going up, one will be the uh, positive, the negative will uh, go to one end of the LEDs plus it'll go up to the other end, so you've got the, at the other end you've got the positive and negative to go on to the next section of the string and then they'll just have resistors and series all along the string. Uh, in this case they've they've kind of pushed it, they've gone for as many LEDs as they could and they've lowered the number of resistors, but that's okay. Uh, it means there's a slight higher amount of flicker likely to be off this because it's going to be lit for, lit for less of the sine wave. Um, but it's not bad, you know, looking at these they're, they're fine and shaking it backwards and forwards and looking at the pattern. What I'm seeing is it's lit for uh, more than 50% of the time, which isn't too bad. And uh, it's kind of, technically speaking, it's strobing at 100 hertz, but it's not that visible. Um, probably more so when you move your eyes or you get out your peripheral vision. But yeah, very nice. Uh, so thanks to Michal for sending those. It was quite entertaining doing that to them.